All right, Shalom. Shalom. All right, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash, double honesty, apostles, and elders of great millstone, we well through the Spirit, who tell us his truth. Peace and blessings to the hopeful legs, got throughout the four corners of the earth, preaching and living the word, sincerity and truth. All right, it's brother from uh, GMS Dallas, so we're here with another Saturday class. And uh, today's topic is we're going to go into um, Yahweh Shai and Solomon uh, being the same individual in the reincarnation. Okay. So, uh, we're going to start with, uh, first we're going to actually prove what reincarnation is, okay, and prove that reincarnation is biblical, and then we're going to go into how um, Solomon is uh, Yahweh Shah, uh, like I said, you know, because the scriptures refer to him as um, the son of David, okay, and so Lord will, this is edifying for Akiyam, and we're going to go get right to it. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Exodus 20 and 5, and then uh, the other brother can hold uh, Second Ezra 14 and 35. Exodus 20 and 5. Come on, come on. I'll give This is uh, the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy power am a jealous power. It right. says, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right, so what's the saying is you, you come back every third or fourth generation, so the Most High is saying don't pretty much go into not worshiping idols and going to the law, okay? But, uh, uh read that one more time. Okay, this is uh, Exodus 20 and five. It says, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy power am a jealous power, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right, so you don't perish. Once you die, you don't perish. It's just not one time you're on the planet Earth. You come back every three or four generations and your spirit is in uh, another body. Okay? Uh, who had a uh, second edge? This is uh, second edge chapter 14 and verse 35. For after death shall the judgment come. When we shall live again. Right, so after death shall a judgment come. And so you like we just read in Exodus, you come back every three or four generations. So you perish and then the judgment comes. Go ahead. And then shall the name of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. So I missed one point. Uh, start on reading from the time. Second Exodus fourteen and thirty five. For after death shall the judgment come. Mm -hmm. When we shall live again. Right, when we shall live again. So after death, the judgment comes, and then you live again. Okay? So like proven. Con. Then proven you come uh, every three or four, come back every three or four generations, and you, you play out your judgment on planet Earth. Yep. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Right, so the works of the righteous can be uh, manifest. Okay? So the, spirit, the scriptures say the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So if you was a man of the Lord or a prophet in one uh, incarnation, you come back every three or four generations, you play that lot. If you was a wicked nigga, you come back every three or four generations and you and you uh, are into that lot. And it's manifest. Okay. Go ahead, come on. Okay. Uh, this is uh, second edge of seven and fifty six. Uh seven. actually uh You got that already? Yeah, I already had that. Okay, but, uh, uh, we'll wait then. <laughs> yeah, it, that nice. uh, somebody get a Hebrews nine and twenty seven. There's a scripture in uh Sirach where it says truth returns to him that practice in her. Mm. Yeah, it's like Sirach 27 or... You want? Oh, okay. Right. Oh, yeah, 27, 27? Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Sirach okay. 27 and 9, it says, The bird will resort unto their like, so will truth return unto him that practice in her. And then there's a precept that also goes into how uh, faith is born with the faithful in the, in the womb, mm -hmm. something like that. So it returns, you know, as you're born back into the earth you know, yeah. with the faithful in the womb. Yep, yep, it's, it's with you uh, through all gen generations. You know, beautiful. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 27? Con. It's uh, Hebrews 9 and 27. All right, it reads. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Right, after this, the judgment. So uh, the Christians will read that, and they'll think that you, you perish and you go to either heaven or hell, and then that, that's the end all be all. No, you got to go through the precepts to, to actually get the understanding on that, man. And that's talking about your That's talking about Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Con, con. I got one. Oh, yeah, one. oh no, he he uh, already got it, so he okay. can work it out. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, are you ready for it? Yes. Yeah, All right. This is a uh, second Ezra chapter seven, verse fifty-six. It says, "For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death." Right. 
And it's also, if you read that without even understanding, that you would think that you uh, suffer for your sins and go to hell. But no, you come back and that judgment is played on planet Earth. Somebody hold um, Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. Can I read that one more time for me? Come on. It's 2nd Edge of 7 and 56. It says, For while we lived and, get, uh, and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after uh, uh, after death. Oh, look at 2nd uh, Edge of 7 and 47. It says, For what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after death look for punishment? Mm. Read it one more time? Yeah. <laughs> same chapter. Yeah, yeah, same chapter, just further up. It says, for what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after death look for punishment? You see, so, so that, that dynamic of death not being the end of it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It keeps coming up in the scriptures. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's not the end of it. You, you, uh, you perish, you, you live out your judgment in the next incarnation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Ecclesiastes 3. Okay. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and 15. That which has been, uh, reverse sixteen. Sixteen, all right. Yeah. Ecclesiastes three and sixteen. And moreover, I saw under the sun, the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Right. So under the under the sun, where are we? We we are currently under the sun right now. Okay. So that shows you that's where judgment plays out. You you do what you do on the planet Earth in your incarnation. Okay. Whether you do wickedness or righteousness. You you sleep with your fathers, okay? I mean, you you so called perish or die, and you come to the Most High, renew your spirit on the planet Earth after three or four generations, and then this is a place where you you live out your judgment, whether it be wickedness or righteousness, you know. Yep. To your children, I got something real quick. Because huh. there's a lot of people who they die blessed, mm -hmm. and you be like, damn, you know, like they 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 just won. Huh. But as it says here, this is uh, did you get Jeremiah thirty two? Uh, no, I didn't have that. Somebody can get Jeremiah 32 and 18 for the brother. Because this goes into it. This is uh, Sirach 11 and 28. It says, Judge none blessed before his death, for a man shall be known in his children. <laughs> so you could die blessed and do all of this wickedness, but you're eventually going to come back. So you may think George Washington, well, he died fucked up. There's a lot of Edomites who Pretty much died on a high horse. Yeah, well, yeah. they they even said uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth died. Uh, they said she died peacefully. Right. Yeah, she just went to bed and didn't wake up. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. I got that in Jeremiah. But she's gonna that she's gonna eventually be known in her ch yep. in the children. Yep. And that's this breaks it down with the brothers with the read. This is uh, Jeremiah 32 and 18. It says, "Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompense." the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty power, the Lord of hosts is his name. <clears throat> Read that again? Yep. It's uh, Jeremiah 32 and 19. Uh, uh, and 18. It says, Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompense the iniquity of the chi uh, of the fathers into the bosom of their children right. after them. Right. So recompense is what payback. You, you pay back the iniquity of your of the fathers. And to the children, what every three or four generations. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, people think they die blessed, but now nah, you're gonna pay for that, man. In some point, one, some form of fashion, okay. In reincarnation, go ahead. Was that it, night? Yeah, that was it. Okay. And we read that. So, somebody holds Second Samuel seven and twelve. Okay, so now that we've proven that actually reincarnation is a biblical concept, and it's actually uh, it's a part of the truth. Okay, we're going to show how Solomon is your Shah. Huh. I got it. There you got it. Yep. And if somebody can hold 1 Kings 3 and 6. 2 Samuel 7 and 12. And when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. That's I like will, it, uh, sort of one time for me to show Kind of 12. Yeah. 12. And when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee. Right. So this stuff is uh, Nathan the prophet mm -hmm. uh, prophesying to uh, King David in the spirit. Go ahead. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Right. It's talking about Solomon. Okay. So it says, I will set up thy seed after thee, which proceed out of thy bowels. Yeah. It's talking about King Solomon. Go ahead. 
he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Right, because Solomon was, what, the mercy of David, okay? Because David, you know, had a few transgressions that caused death, okay? But uh, he, he, Solomon was at mercy because Mosai had chosen. Yeah, Solomon only, uh, that kingdom only lasted 40 years. Mm -hmm. So if he's saying the one that comes out of your loins is going to establish his throne forever, that has to be Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 9, right? yep. Right, and, uh, Luke, the second chapter, goes into it. And Peter, <laughs> who, right. who himself, who's David in Acts, the second chapter, which after you get whatever precepts you want, I'll, I'll find it and read it, but he tells you that that was speaking of Yahweh Shai literally out of his own mouth, you know, but whatever you got, okay. works, I'll, I'll find it. Yeah, somebody got a uh, First Kings 3 I and 6? Okay. Go it's a uh, First Kings 3 and 6, it reads, And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he has walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in a rightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him his great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Right, a son to sit on his throne. Because uh, cause, uh, like I said, most I showed him mercy. David should have been put to death a few times over for all the transgressions. Right. That show you how much the Lord cut for David. Yeah. <laughs> that show you how much the Lord cut for David, man. Golly, that's heavy, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the Heavenly Father has a son. And he put David in that same position. You know, your son is going to rule over, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the same thing he did with his son. So that bond between David and uh, and, and and the Lord, people like to just gloss that over. Like, they'll go into David's uh, faults, even though not understanding that the Lord put David in those positions for his will to play out. But they'll try to blame it on David. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, yeah, Yahawashi and David, they get disrespected so much to where, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you don't got to worship neither one of them. Who we go? Well, who we got to deal with then? Right. Man. I got it real quick. That's how the throne gonna be established, yeah. This is um, <laughs> this is out of P David's mouth, out of P Peter's mouth. This is Acts two and uh, twenty nine. This is Peter speaking. It says, "Men and brethren, let me speak unto you of the patriarch David, <laughs> that he is both dead and buried, but he was alive speaking, mm -hmm. and his sepulcher is with us unto this day." Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God hath sworn with an oath unto him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he will raise up Yahweh Shai to sit on his throne. Mm -hmm. That right there is letting you know that that is who Nathan was telling. He, basically, right. Solomon in Psalm 72 breaks it down even further that Solomon is Yahweh Shai. Right. Gotta be. That was plain as day. He literally just told you mm -hmm. <laughs> that the one that Nathan was talking about was shy. Was shy. Yeah. How could you get around that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Man. I got a uh, this is a uh, Luke chapter one, verse thirty-one. This uh, this is the angel talking to Mary. This Can is, you speak uh, up too, Bob Shaw? Yeah, it was for the you know. Oh, con uh, this is Luke chapter 1, verse, yeah, 30, uh, verse 31. It says, And behold, thou shalt continue in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call him, uh, shall call his name Yahweh Shai. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord uh, power shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Yeah. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Right, so that makes sense. Like, yeah. That's what you said to uh, <laughs> first, uh, first Samuel, uh, second Samuel, second Samuel. Samuel. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I actually had that, that the water, bro. Yeah. So that was right there. His his. So how's talking about Solomon? It's gonna be there forever. But also Yahweh Shai is gonna be there forever. Yeah. Two people right. not gonna send us. This is on throne. Right. So that that has to be the same person, like the right. other uh, said, man. That's it. Somebody get a Matthew one and one. No way around it. Matthew what? Matthew 1 and 1. So this is the book of Matthew 1 and 1. It reads, The book of the generation of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, the son of David, and <laughs> the son right of Abraham. Abraham. Right now, yeah. the son of David. <laughs> That's the son of Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Showing he's also Isaac as well, but you know, we're going to That's only for those who have ears. Yeah, it's only for those who have the ears to hear, man. That, 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 these are the spirit, this is a spiritual uh, lesson, you know? You only get it if, if the spirit is dealing with you. Yeah. If you're a carnal man, you're not going to accept this. You're going to reject it, and it wasn't given to everybody. Yeah. Okay? Uh, let's right. go back to Second Samuel you. 7. Okay. Second Samuel. Yeah, somebody called Hebrews 7, 7 and 26. 
Con. It says, no, I actually start with 12 again. It says, 2 Samuel 7 and 12, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Con. I'm sorry, did we uh, finish the first Kings 3? Yeah, I believe so. I, I believe so. Okay. We can go okay. back. I'm going to say, I got it right here if you need to read it again. Okay. Time. Like, right. First Kings. Actually, uh... Uh, uh, verse 13. Yeah, okay. Verse 13, it says, He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish his throne of his kingdom forever. Right, and let's get uh, All right. first Kings. So, first Kings chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he has uh, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. Right, so I was saying he was uh he was he's that mercy of King David because of his transgressions. Because he was beloved, so the scriptures say, "I wish have mercy on whom I have mercy." Who, uh, the, uh actually, let's get it. Uh, Romans nine, real quick. Because mm -hmm. David got mercy from that first covenant standard, because death, he should have died. Yeah. Just like we should all be dead. So to be of the house of David, you want the mercies that David got. Mm -hmm. You know. Technically, we. That shows you the the, the heavenly Father is over technicalities. At any point, he could supersede a technicality he ordained and say, nah, this is the judgment. And that's what he did. And that's what Solomon was able to do for David in building that temple, which David gave him the blueprint because, you know, that was the same blueprint that Moses got. But that was the way that David, what he had planned on doing, was able to be forwarded. But it was for 40 years at that time. Right. So when is it going to happen forever as it was promised to him? That's through Yahweh Shai. Right. Point blank period. That's it. <laughs> Romans 9. Time. Time. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9. And I'm going to start at verse uh, 14. It says, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. Right. So the Most High, the Most High shows, shows the mercy, man. Like the other said, he can supersede and he can intervene. Whenever he sees fit, because this is his program. And he just happened to chose David from the foundation of the earth. He chose that throne. It was all set up in the spirit. Okay? That he was going to give him mercy. So it just wasn't <clears throat> David's fault. You know, he, most high controls everything. So David had to make those transgressions for uh, Solomon to be his, you know, mercy. And lead on down to your house, y'all. That's all the heavenly father. And what, what is the first, for brothers, newer brothers, what is the first name? That was going. What was Solomon's name given to him by Nathan the prophet? Because when he was born, was no, close. close. Oh. You close. <laughs> Just drop the K. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jedediah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? Beloved of the Most High. Man. And what did what did what did he, the Most High say? This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. Hear ye him. And just like you're saying, how the Lord do what he want. You know what I'm saying? He 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 ushered in reincarnation to fulfill his promise. And if you don't get it, you just don't get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Without he reincarnation, nothing yeah. makes sense. He yeah. used that. Yeah. It's the, it glues everything together. Yeah. There's no way you can understand the scriptures that get it without the reincarnation. Yeah, I was like, how can you make all these promises to men that died? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Before they got the promise. promise. So you gotta figure that out. Right. Yeah. You, you know? told Abraham you and your seed go be in this land. Right. <laughs> Put that yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. You gotta make it make sense. Uh, back in Second Samuel, time. Uh, back in Second Samuel seven and fourteen, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, right. with the stripes of the children of men. Right. And so did now. No one that never happened to King Solomon. Right. No, you can't. You can't Solomon. pull. You can't pull any priest up saying that Solomon got beat down like that. Right. You know he he ruled for forty years. He went off and then he died peacefully. Yep. You know, he slept with his fathers. He slept with his fathers. David put all our enemies under subjection at that time. Mm -hmm. When you read in First Kings three, I believe. That's right. When Solomon took over to him, you know. That's it. So uh, somebody got Hebrews seven twenty six. Yeah. All right. So so who did this happen to? Go ahead. It's Hebrews chapter seven and verse twenty six. It says, "For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, and undefiled." Separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, 
first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Right, he offered up himself for the people's sin because, you know, we know that the high priest will go uh, once a year to the Holy of Holies to offer sacrifice for forgiveness for the nation of Israel. How Hashem only did it once for him, for himself and for the for the nation. So that one that shows you how important Yahweh Shah is, as far as his, what he was set up to do. So you can't not worship Yahweh Shah. You can't talk down upon that name, man. That was, that was a heavy task that he was given. Okay. This is uh, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say if I can make a point because Yahweh Shah was perfect in the law. Mm -hmm. So how is this his own sins? He, if he never sinned, how, you know what is this talking about? Yeah, yeah that's exactly what I'm alluding yeah, to. Exactly. Yeah. 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 First Peter 2 and 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on a tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Right. Those stripes. So those are the stripes, okay? He didn't, he didn't take those lumps as, as, you, as a Solomon. He took those stripes and those lumps in his punishment as Yahweh shot. Let's say read, read uh, verse 27 again, Brother Sean. He's in Hebrews, Hebrews 7 and 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. Right, so he didn't have to do that. Go ahead. But this he did once when he offered up himself. That's so because he was what? The, the perfect sacrifice. He was a lamb without blemish, slain from the foundation of the earth. So he only had to do that once. You know, the, when the priests had to do the temple, they were still in the flesh, so making mistakes. So we had to continuously offer those up, you know, to be staying in the most high's good graces. But because he was that lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, he only had to do it once. And, and that's what, you know, sealed us being back in the heavenly father's good graces forever. You know, go ahead. Yeah. Verse 28. For Actually, the law. No, read, read 27 again. Con, he, he, Hebrews 7 and 27. Who needed not daily as those high priests to mm -hmm. offer up sacrifice for first for his own sins and then for the people's. Right. For, like I said, for his own sins as well, like, like the uh, brother said. You know, so he uh, he had to offer up that sacrifice for himself and for us. Why was that? Because as King Solomon, he was righteous at first. He was he was he was doing a great job, but then towards the end, he started uh, sacrificing and making idols unto the, all his wives, all, all the heathen wives he had. So he had to he had to, uh, he had to pay for that. You know. Yes, you don't get away. Yeah, you don't get away. At some point, you don't, you don't have to get that issue. And then notice, know? notice it called Solomon, my son. He shall be my son. Only Adam, Solomon, Yahweh Shai, you know. Of course, it came as Isaac as well, but mm -hmm. it made it a point to say he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. And that's why he whooped his ass like that. Yeah. And he taught him, you know what I'm saying, because that was his son. So, mm -hmm. he, you know, Yahweh Shai came back. And he learned his lesson as Adam he fell, as Solomon he fell. You got to think, as a nation, our throughness really starts with Adam and Solomon. All of these captivities we had to go through, Syria until now, that was after Solomon. Dealing with this flesh, that was after Adam. Man, that's a good point. So Romans, the fifth chapter, tells you by one man's disobedience were we all made sinners. Mm -hmm. I mean, but by one man's obedience we were all made righteous. Right. So that's the man. That's the son of the Most High. Right, full circle. Yeah, you know. That's right. Yeah. Even you know. Isaac, specifically, the, uh, remember the angel told Abraham is like, in the time of life, I'm gonna come back to you. Right. And it called it called <laughs> it called Isaac Abraham's only begotten right. son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he had other children. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, but I got one real quick. Too. This is Psalm 72, and one. Give. This is David speaking. Psalm for Solomon is what it's called. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. And I'm going to jump to the point. Verse 4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy. He shall break in pieces the oppressor. When did Solomon do this? Solomon had peace because David broke mm -hmm. the oppressor down. Solomon didn't save us. Right, right, right. So how is when is this going to be fulfilled? Also, when you read down, it says he's going to have dominion. Verse 8, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea. Solomon only ruled in the promised land. Mm -hmm. Man. Yep. See, so if you can't see it, you know, ultimately you just don't have ears to hear and eyes to see. Oh, that's Solomon is your high shy, bro. <laughs> that's what it boils down to. Yeah. See, well, even, also, even on a smaller scale, when you think about certain precepts, uh, when, when, when King Solomon had the vision, 
Uh, he, he asked for the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to basically uh, rule over the people. And then when Yahushua came on the scene, what did he tell the people? Seek ye the kingdom first. Everything else will be added. So those concepts could, uh, continue to mingle throughout the whole, you know what I'm saying? And it's those little bitty tidbits that you were like, okay, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And everybody don't get that. He said so, one greater than <laughs> Solomon is here. Like, bro, you got to deal with these scriptures, man. Mm -hmm. His name was Yahya. He's my beloved. There you go. <laughs> Spirit, yeah. uh, uh, this is Daniel 7. Oh, it's like, this is Daniel 7, verse 13. It says, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, talking about Yahushua, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, which is, uh, you know, Yahweh, and they brought him near before him. And there was given uh, him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed which is going back to what we read in uh first kings um, i'm sorry second samuel the seventh chapter and uh luke the first chapter you know the, the kingdom that was going to be given unto him uh, an everlasting kingdom yeah beautiful yep that lines right up yep that everlasting kingdom so it says solomon only rule it was only like 40 years of peace so, hey, that, that lines up. So, who's that talking about? He has to be your house shot. Uh, was that it on that? Yeah, that was it on that. Uh, let's get up 1 Kings 1 and 32. And somebody called Zechariah 9 and 9. This is uh, 1 Kings 1 and 32. It already reads. And King David said, Call me the doctor, the priest. All right, so this is a time when this, uh, Solomon is, is getting ready to be anointed. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And Nathan the prophet, and Benaniah the son of Jehadiah, and they came before the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and call Solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule. Right, so he rode upon King David, King David's mule to go in to be anointed. And so ain't that the same prophecy that was uh, for your house shot? Mm -hmm. Somebody get a Zechariah 9 and 9, and uh, Matthew 21 and 5. What verse was you at in First Kings? Uh, one, and two. one and thirty-two. What was that you called for, Matthew? Uh, Twenty-one and five. Uh, this is uh, Zechariah nine and nine. All right, it reads: Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, o, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt. The foal of an ass. All right, so that's the prophecy of Yahweh shall come, man. He, our, our king is coming. So all these things that you that we were going into are completely lined up with, with uh, Solomon. You know, Yahweh shall be in the king, being the son beloved. Solomon being the king, being the beloved son. Okay, having the kingdom established forever. It's talking about both of them, but two people are not going. Obviously, two people you know are not going to sit on the throne. Mm -hmm. So spiritual ears, you got to understand that that's that's talking about Yahweh shall. So my God, Matthew 21 and 5. It's uh, Matthew 21 and 5. It says, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold thy... I'll start at verse 4. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold thy king cometh upon unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. And uh, the disciples went and did as Yahweh shall commanded. And brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. Right. So this is not how y'all decided to set earlier. How all these concepts are lined up together, mm -hmm. you know. So that that's talking about uh this that lines up. You got Solomon being your high shot. Okay. Um, I might get Matthew twenty-two and you know, forty-one. Matthew chapter twenty-two verse forty-one. It says, uh, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahweh shall ask them, saying, What think ye of Yahweh? What think ye of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then does David in spirit call him Lord, saying, Yahweh said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. It's like, read, read that one more time for me. Right? 
This is Matthew chapter 21, verse 41. Excuse me, 22, verse 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahweh Shai asked them, saying, What think ye of Yahweh Shai, or the Messiah? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then does David in spirit call him Lord, saying, Yahweh said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Right. If yeah, David called him Lord, how is he his son? Because he knew in the spirit that Solomon was Yahweh. You know, it was it was spiritually revealed unto him. So he didn't even use the words his spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, it's my old um, Psalm 22 and 16. Man, it's that after that they didn't even ask him any questions. Like I said, that day forth, they didn't even mess with him. Right? Yeah, yeah. They just let him. They, at that point, they just like, "Nah, we just gotta kill this guy, man. We gotta get him out of here." Like in John eight and fifty six, he says, "Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and was glad." What does that mean? Yeah. He said he ain't even old enough. But he didn't get it. They went carnal with it. <laughs> It's uh, Micah 5 and 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruled in Israel, which is Yahweh Shah, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Mm -hmm. He ain't just pop up. He's been there from the beginning. That's it. Uh, somebody got Psalms uh, 22 and 16. Uh, this is Psalms 22 and uh, 16. Ephrata, that's Bethlehem. If anybody, if you ever want to cut a Christian, you know, that's the land. land. That's yeah. the land that came along with Ruth that uh, Boaz acquired. That's that's the land where David, Solomon, and Yahweh were born. And a lot of notable people in our history were buried there. Bethlehem. Psalms 22 and 16. It reads. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. So I brought this out just because to show that David in the spirit was prophesying of Yahweh Shah. So it, it was revealed unto him that he knew that that was going to be, his son was going to be the, the savior, okay? That definitely it. makes sense with, with what Nathan told him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So all these, man, say recurring themes. <laughs> yeah, all these recurring themes are lining up, man. So it's so without a doubt that you can't get around that reincarnation is in the scriptures and that Solomon is your house shot. Huh. You know? Uh, did anybody else have any other precepts or anything? Yeah, I got something real okay. quick. Um, this is um, 1 Kings 1 and 39. Just a note. It says in Zadok, the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle. Now, for brothers who just came in, who was that oil for that was in the tabernacle? The priest. In particular, who? Uh, uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron's linen. Yep. Where can that be found? Uh, Leviticus. Uh, Exodus 30. Oh, Exodus. Okay. Exodus 30. Um, there was an oil made. I believe that's it. Yep. That was an oil made, a perfume made. <laughs> And that was only supposed to be give, uh, for the sons of Aaron and his sons, right? But here it is, 1 Kings 1 and 39. And Zadok, the priest, took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew his trumpet. Now, what does this symbolize? Anybody? King and priest. King and priest. <laughs> We're going to be kings and priests. You know what I'm saying? I believe David was anointed with the same oil. Yeah, he was. You know what I'm saying? And that oil was only supposed to be for the high priest, showing you that the high priest was going to come out of yeah. Judah, which fulfills yeah, Genesis, yeah. the 49th about, chapter. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the lawgiver is going to come out of Judah. Right. You know? John the Baptist and Yahweh Shah, that transition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John the Baptist was from the, the, the lineage of Aaron, and he baptized Yahweh Shah, but he was letting the people know, this is the man. Mm -hmm. This is the high priest. Somebody that the Levitical priesthood being passed over. Passed on. That's what John the Baptist's job was to do, low key, <laughs> to transition the priesthood over to uh, Melchizedek, which you know that's Abraham and Yahweh all over again. If 
if you, you want to just bring it up. Uh, Exodus 30 and 30. And thou, and thou shalt anoint Aaron, just for the sake of the listeners. And thou shalt uh, anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou, and thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a uh, holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Neither shall ye make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compounded any like it, or whosoever put any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. So some serious stuff right there, man. You so know? how was these men able to get right. that oil? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then, the, uh, what's that, uh, Proverbs 30, uh, Proverbs 1, where it goes to Yahweh shall be in her from the beginning. If he's been here from the beginning, going through the scriptures, you see all the times where he was he intervened mm -hmm. in the in the in the future of Israel, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? That's why going into the reincarnation and seeing all these different times where he's whether he was uh, uh whether he was born a man or a woman and came and did what he came to do, or whether he was sent from the heavens to make a point, he's he's always been there. <laughs> Right. He's always been there. You know what I'm saying? So being the only begotten, being reincarnated, being chosen from the He's that guy. Like I got one more here. <laughs> Sirach 45 and 25. According to the covenant made with David, the son of Jesse of the tribe of Yahawadah, Judah, that the inheritance of the king should be to his posterity alone, so the inheritance of Aaron should also be unto his seed. You know what uh, oil that represents a conduit, a conduit of energy. Mm. And anointing oil is a conduit or, or, or an absorber of spiritual energy. And so you have to be uh, of that seed line, of that DNA line to even receive that spirit. So mm. that lets you know, you know, King Solomon was of a special stock to be able to go in and stand in the office of the king and priest, you know, mm. out of the order of Melchizedek, truly. You know, that that, that, that that was always being mentioned throughout, you know, our lineage, that there was always going to be that point where it comes back, where it comes back. So, it manifests. Mm -hmm. I find it heavy that with Solomon, when he did the sacrifice, the chariot came, and pretty much fire came from the chariot and, and pretty much hit the altar. You know, uh, I want to say it's like First Kings eight chapters. And then when, of course, whenever Yahweh Shah was on the scene, when he got baptized. The chariot came. This is my beloved son, the one well pleased. Here me him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, can I get a Can I get a quick one for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read two of them real quick. Just two parallels. This is First Kings chapter one. Um, I'm gonna read verse thirty nine and forty. It says, "And Zadok the priest took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon." And they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes, and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent from the sound of them. Now, for younger brothers that just came through, what 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 other instance can you think of yeah. about the earth rent? Yeah. When Solomon, think about it, when Solomon was anointed the king, the earth rent. Yeah. So oh. what other what other what other what other parallel can you <clears throat> link with it? Uh, at the Yahweh shot the yeah. ghost. It's <laughs> dope. The split. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. I'm gonna read it for y'all real quick. Matthew 27, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints were slept in rows. See, so when King Solomon was anointed king. The earth rent, you know, the huge earth, just imagine it was an earthquake. Yeah. And then when Yahweh Shai fulfills his mission, the earth rent. Proven. Come on, man, like two parallels. Yep, yep. Very good. parallels, right? Yep, over and over again, reoccurring things and linking them together, man. What was it on that? That was it. Yeah. Uh, this, is, uh, this is going back, you know, uh, the scripture at the now he had uh, brought out First Kings, the first chapter, about um, you know King Solomon, you know getting anointed with that oil, and uh, this is Psalm chapter forty-five, and this is prophesying to Yahweh Shah. Psalms forty-five and verse seven: Thou lovest righteousness and hatest iniquity; therefore God, thy God, 
have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Mm -hmm. So who's God's God <laughs> that got anointed with the, with the oil? Yeah, you know. Keep reading it. Okay. Verse uh, 8. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Boom. And when you go back to Exodus 30 and you read about the... The, what they put in their oil. Man. Uh, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't get around it, man. What scripture was that? Casey uh, said it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because when you go back to Exodus 30, what's it say? Let me see if I can find it real quick again. It says, uh, Exodus 30 and 22, Moreover the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh, Take thou unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels of sweet cinnamon, Half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet uh, calamus, 250 shekels, and of the cassia, 500 shekels, and of the shekel of the she and, uh, and after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of the olive oil and hen. There you go. Yeah, it's the same mix. Beautiful. Uh, did anybody have any, else have anything? Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty much all I had. You know, I'm not long-winded, so hey, but that little one's edifying. It was a good refresher for bros that already knew this topic, and a uh, little one's edifying for those that are new, that are just coming in and listening and trying to learn. Uh, we're going to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahashai, Ba'ashem, Rekak, Badash, Dabon, the Apostles, and Elder Great Millstone, Rubel, through Spirit, who taught us his truth. Peace and blessings unto the whole for elect. Shalom. Shalom.